So yesterday I responded to Elon Musk about their AI training compute, and he said I was wrong, and Stephen Mark Ryan with Solving the Money Problem and Dylan Loomis with Electrified both picked it up and broadcast it even further. On the good end of things, however, Elon specified a lot of details about how Tesla is building out their AI compute, and even more importantly, what percentage it's going to be versus inference in the future, which actually proves me right in a way. So let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, yes, I was wrong. Elon did correct me. I'm going to talk about that first. I'll front load that just in case you don't believe me, but it was an indirect correction because basically I've got what I said here. Then there was another response below that. And then Elon said yes to the other response. So, so basically I was incorrect. I will defend myself just a little bit, however, because during their April earnings call, Elon did put it the way that I say it in my comment, but he is correcting it anyway. And obviously he's right because he knows more about this, but much more importantly than whether I was right or wrong is the details that Elon gave. So we'll just start with the, you know, correction and so forth first, and then we'll move on to the more interesting details. So anyway, Elon responding to the same CNBC article that I posted my video about yesterday, and you can catch that up here. If you haven't seen it, I will also put it at the end of this video so you can click on it then. But basically XAI and Tesla kind of traded places in terms of getting 12,000 of Nvidia's latest H100 GPU boards. The CNBC article made it sound like it was a really bad thing, and I suggest instead that it was just that XAI could take those and make use of them at the present moment, whereas Tesla couldn't, and Elon responded to that and said basically what you can see here. Tesla had no place to send the NVIDIA chips to turn them on, so they would have just sat in a warehouse. He then goes on to talk about how the Giga Texas data center is almost complete, and they will be able to install more GPUs there when that is complete. Anyway, responding to Sawyer Merritt talking about this, he said, of the roughly $10 billion in AI-related expenditures, I said Tesla would make this year, so he he did talk about that previously. About half is internal, primarily the Tesla designed AI inference computer and sensors present in all of our cars plus Dojo. So that means somewhere around $5 billion of sensors that are being put in cars and hardware boards and things like that. And also their internal project, their training project, Dojo, which we really haven't heard a ton about in quite a while. So I would be really interested to hear what Elon and Tesla have to say about that. Elon then continues, for building the AI training superclusters, NVIDIA hardware is about two thirds of that cost. My current best guess for NVIDIA purchases by Tesla are three to $4 billion this year. So this is in regards to the leaked NVIDIA emails where they discuss Tesla not spending enough money, in other words, around $10 billion on NVIDIA compute. And basically Elon is saying we weren't planning on ever spending $10 billion on that. It was more on the order of three or $4 billion. So that was why he was responding to that. Anyway, I said below that, thank you for clarifying this. I think too many people were thrown by some incorrect wording in the article. It mentions 85,000 H100s when what you actually said, and this was during the earnings call, was the equivalent of 85,000 H100s. These these are very different statements and CNBC should issue a correction, not a retraction for that. And I did make a note of that underneath. Ryan Fosnaught responded to my comment. I think 85,000 is the right number. The new data center will house 50,000. They have an existing 35,000 H100s. This should all be in addition to the dojo systems. And then Elon responded to that saying, correct. So he indirectly, you know, <laughs> disagreed with what I said and agreed with what Ryan had to say. Now I'll defend myself a little bit because I went back to the April 23rd, I believe it was of April earnings call transcript and read through it. And he does say equivalent of 85,000 H100s. So while I guess I was incorrect and it was actually 85,000 H100s, you could see where I could have gone wrong. But anyway, that's not the important part. What comes after is what's really important. And Elon was on a bit of a tear yesterday and it was great. We got a lot of information. So here he says, also, I can't overstate the difficulty of making 50,000 H100s train as a coherent system. And that's what's going to be installed in the Giga Texas South extension. No company on earth has been able to achieve this yet. Once we have that system working, we will order more hardware. Summer is here, which means long days and lovely evenings out with friends and family, enjoying a good time together. That's why I love Zbiotics. Zbiotics allows me to enjoy nights out in moderation while feeling awesome the next morning. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works: when you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct and not dehydration. 
that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic produces an enzyme to break the byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash Dr. No or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use Dr. No at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or the occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. At home or over at a friend's house, I drink a bottle of Zbiotics before going out, I stay hydrated between drinks, and the next day I feel great. Zbiotics is a real game changer for fun nights and the next day. Be sure to head to zbiotics.com slash Dr. No and use the code Dr. No at checkout for 15% off. Thanks to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode, and now let's get back to it. And if you don't understand how difficult it is to create a data center, Tim Zaman's got you covered here. So responding to Elon's post here, he says, the practicalities of building a supercomputer are insane once you get down to it. Let's assume you have a data center location and order GPUs, both, you know, Texas would be one of those situations. You're probably thinking of these sleek orderly photos of racks of compute. Just think about how those GPUs got there. I love this picture from Nat Friedman, Andromeda Cluster. This is only a few hundred GPUs. That's only a few hundred, think about 50,000 orders of magnitude more than this. Just quote, taking delivery of thousands of GPUs is a crazy military operation, even before any racking, stacking, and cabling or bring up. Data centers are usually built out slowly, but in the AI craze, you want it up ASAFP, and existing data center facilities don't accommodate for this well. Limited amount of trucks, warehousing, unloading docks, ramps, dollies, jacks, lifts, corridors, etc. I would also add to this getting the power into the building, getting the cooling into the building. These things produce immense amounts of of heat. And so you have to cool them, liquid cooling systems, air cooling systems, all of that kind of stuff. So they are gigantic energy hogs. All of this stuff is kind of like a military operation. And that's only for like a few hundred or a few thousand. When you start talking about 50,000, it is a completely insane thing. And if you didn't catch Jensen Wong's recent keynote, he talks about that as well. He talks about some of the solutions that NVIDIA is coming up with to try to make these multiple thousand GPU clusters actually function as one unit rather than a whole bunch of disparate GPUs, which are not nearly as useful. So these data centers are immensely complex projects, perhaps dwarfing even the likes of the Apollo mission or something, or at least parts of the Apollo mission. And then let's turn to even more information that Elon gave out. Like I said, he was being very open and informative for about an hour there yesterday. Holmar said, thanks for the color, very interesting. Off topic, but how do you see Dojo comparing to NVIDIA cluster? Is there a realistic pathway to one day producing training compute internally rather than buying from NVIDIA? And to that, Elon responded, training compute for Tesla is relatively small compared to inference compute. And I've done a video about this recently. Definitely check it out up here if you haven't seen it yet. As the ladder scales linearly with the size of the fleet. Perhaps the best way to think about this is in terms of power consumption. When the Tesla fleet reaches 100 million vehicles, peak power consumption of AI hardware in cars, in other words, the stuff you're driving around, will be on the order of 100 gigawatts. And that, by the way, is a ridiculously large number. Training power consumption is probably less than 5 gigawatts. These are very rough guesses. Obviously, 5 gigawatts of AI training compute is enormous by current standards, but it is only about 5% of total Tesla AI compute. There is a path for Dojo to exceed NVIDIA. It's a long shot, as I said before, but success is one of the possible outcomes. And I think my response to this is worth including in this discussion. Impressive numbers, inference for all AI applications will dwarf training due to the scale of inference needs. My prediction is that Tesla will leverage inference arbitrage from their edge compute platforms, car and human bot, to help the company and us owners do a lot of inference, help society fulfill its AI appetite, and make a lot of money. And the YouTube video I link there, of course, is the same one that I just discussed. So what is this difference between inference and training compute? Training compute is probably what you think about most of the time. It's, you know, when you take a whole bunch of data and you feed it into a gigantic computer or series of computers or 50,000 H100s, whatever that thing is, you feed in a ton of data, you run it through very, very complex math, basically just dot products, or in other words, addition and multiplication, but just done billions or trillions of times. And out the other side of that, you get a result.
result. Then you compare that result to the ground truth, which is either labeled video or simulation or something like that. You figure out the probability of where all the errors occurred. You go back, you run it through again, you keep doing that cycle over and over again. That takes a localized large data cluster because it all needs to be together. The bandwidth of communication is very, very high during training. And these models are very complex. They have dropout layers. They're not optimized yet. They use 64 or 128 bit float numbers so that you get a lot of precision while you're doing the training. All of this is unnecessary for inference, which is the point at which you are driving your car around or a bot or something is doing an activity. It doesn't have to learn anything. It just has to use what it already knows to output something, right? So let's say the car sees a stop sign. You know, that's what it sees in its camera. That is then visualized using the inference computer. The decision about what to do from second to second is also inferred inside your local computer. And then the output controls, what you should do, like press the brakes or something along those lines, is also inferred in the output computer. None of that requires training. You can take that really, really big training model and you can squeeze it down by quantizing the numbers to be much lower resolution. You can get rid of the dropout layers. You can distill it down to a more simple model. A bunch of tricks can happen. That inference compute takes a fraction of the amount of power that the training runs did. But the difference is that you are doing that with 100 million vehicles all the time. Let's say you have 100 million cars driving two hours a day. That's 200 million hours of inference compute every day as opposed to whatever it takes to train these systems. So this is why Elon's talking about 100 gigawatts of inference compute. Even though every car individually isn't using that much power, it's running on you know 100 or 150 watts or something like that. When you talk about the scale of 100 million vehicles or even 1 million vehicles, the power required for all of that inference compute dwarfs the amount of power required to train those models for the inference compute. Same is true for large language models. Same is true for many, many other things, which is the reason why I think that Tesla can get into inference arbitrage and exactly what I discuss in the other video. So in the end, yes, Elon corrected me. And I will still say that according to what Elon had said earlier back in April, I think given the information I had, I was correct as far as I knew, but Elon definitely corrected me. And you know, <laughs> such is life. I'm willing to be corrected by Elon. He's a smart guy and he knows exactly what's going on. But much more interesting is the information about how many of these GPUs are going to need to be strung together to act like one gigantic computer, how difficult it is to build out these data centers, how difficult it is to wire all these things together to work like that, and then how little power power, relatively speaking, that's going to require to train these models versus the amount of power that these inference computers are going to use in our cars and eventually in the humanoid bots like Tesla bot. So that's what I've got. Let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're down there, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, it really, really helps out the channel. Thank you so much. And finally, a huge thanks once again to ZBiotics for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out the link in the description and use Dr. No at checkout to get 15% off your order. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.